the death obviously came suddenly. You know what I'm saying? Or the incarceration came suddenly, or or it didn't come suddenly. Whatever the fuck it is, it came suddenly. There's a check behind this one. You know what I'm saying? Like move off the insurance policy, or whatever like that. We talking about the proceeds from every song to come from this point on. He can't. He's no longer here. So. The person you would think that's going to receive that money will be the mother. And you will be wrong. Welcome back to the Big Bad Podcast. I am Ayo Conseco. Fearless leader of Ayo Nation. And this is... Are you serious? As in, um, let's put this out in the open. What's about to start happening is labels are gonna, about to start signing dead rappers, signing rappers after death. This is something that I wanted to speak about a couple of days ago, but um, some kind of way. We had some type of fucking virus come through Alabama. Um, I caught it. I was out of it for three days. Um, I'm just not getting over it. But I need to make sure I got this message across to you guys. In order for you to truly understand what I mean by signing dead artists, you have to... um, We're going to have to go into what high risk is. What happened to the music industry. The inner workings of it. Who's investing in the music industry. And the vetting process. That I've told you guys about. We're going to have to go in depth with it. So. If those things. Are not something that you. Give a fuck about, I, I, you should leave now. So we finna talk about some shit. We finna talk about some shit. Let's start with, with, with the past. What used to take place is, a label wouldn't want a high risk artist. High risk is an artist who is gonna die, you know, just a, just a, what is it, a, a wild card. Just somebody you don't know from one minute to the next one. Um, you didn't want that. You know, Tupac was, he was like a firecracker and shit like that. But high risk would be more like someone who is, has a uh, terminal illness, some shit like that. Uh, um, smoking crack, nah, that, that's not too high risk. Um, Maybe two violent felonies, you know what I'm saying? Something that can be put your way for a long prison sentence, whatever like that. High risk is because we're risking our money. Because what labels used to do is they used to invest time and money into artists. Not just, hey, now you can wear this patch that says you're with Atlantic. Here goes your patch. Now bring us money. You know what I'm saying? It used to be they actually... You would be signed for years before you even came with your first single because they were working you. Uh, artist development would take place. This is when um, they had a magical creature called an A and R, um, where he he would be the one who goes to the subway into the corners and find out who's talented. Go to the um, the places where the, the girls be singing and shit like that, and actually go find raw talent. And it was. The artist developer's job to actually, the label would come together and, and with their vocal coaches, stylists, they got media trainers, everything you would have to go through all these. If you've seen the movie uh, Wanted, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to go to these different stations and learn, you know what I'm saying, what it takes to really be a superstar. Um, 
they would just like just any artist back in the day, like Nelly. You know what I'm saying? Um, Eminem. He was doing a lot of work on the inside before we even heard of him. You know what I'm saying? It was like you hear a word about a motherfucker, but they working with him. You know what I'm saying? Behind the scenes. Um, and because you were investing that time and that energy and that money, you wanted the artist to live long enough so you can see, you know what I'm saying, your spoils of your hard work and shit like that. Nowadays, you don't have to wait on the magazine to tell you who got in the fight. You know what I'm saying? The internet, social media, has changed our life so drastically and it has destroyed the rap game as we knew it. You, you what what rap music was dog was having the blueprint, the gray C D in your Walkman and if you didn't have the jogger proof, that bitch would skip every time you take a step. You know what I'm saying? Like, you had the headphones, you had this big ass CD player in your, in your pocket and shit like that. You're listening to the blueprint, you're listening to the, the uh, Steelmatic, the red CD, the nigga, uh, uh, orange, and him on the stoop with the Air Force One and shit like that. You got the actual picture on the, on the CD. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was actual music, man. The booklet. Like, you be in class and you'll go through the booklet and actually read the book. Like, some of the, the, the little booklet inside of the CD case would fold out to a whole picture. It was real music. You know what I'm saying? If, if something happened, man, if something happened in the industry... You would have to, the Source Magazine, Double XL, you had King, um, maybe you'll, you'll hear about it, like Big Tigger talk about it uh, in the basement. Uh, yeah, MTV Jams, TRL, if it was big enough, you'd hear about the rap niggas on TRL and shit like that. So when we had Road Rules in Real World, that's, that was real reality TV. But because of that, because of the internet and us having everything we need right here, it kind of cut the arms off of the record label because with the record label, not only did they have the stylus and all the, the tangible things that you needed to... To physically fix you, you know, vocal coach, tangible shit, your, your personal trainer, everything that you act to for the whole, for the packaging of it. Um, they had the connections. We got the connection to Vibe Magazine. We got the connection to this artist, that label. You want to feature with this person. You want to, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got these places. We got these people. We got relationships. When it come down to a point where... You don't really, really need a relationship with double XL editor and shit like that to make sure that you got a, a what like to get the, the the front page story and shit like that. To where now you got motherfuckers saying fuck that shit, like not even getting on that shit. The shit is different. It's a whole different fucking place. So it kind of turned labels themselves into just bulky, this paperweight, like this big ass paperweights. Like the fuck are you here for? A person, a rapper can do, and this this is why we'll give Detective Russ credit. Like you can do all that shit from your phone, from your house. You are the label. You are the fucking label. 
You you can do everything that the label does. Everything they did, you can do it yourself. You can look up any number to anybody. You can look up a do it yourself to do whatever kind of, you know what I'm saying, personal training you need to do. You can do everything yourself now. You don't have to wait to find out, oh man, I wonder what happened with this right. Like you going you can immediately know what happened with whatever and react to it, make a song to it. And being that everything is so fast, the timeline, the time, understand. Because everything has moved into hyperdrive, in the life expectancy of an artist is now, it, it, it went from back then, it was a rapper back then. Average is four years, four years. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, four. I, I might be, I might be being, you know, what I'm saying, I might be fucked up. It might be eight years, it might be six years, but it was years. It was years. The life expectancy of an artist's career. It was years, years. Once you, you know, made your, no matter what the fuck, like, you know, what I'm saying, like. Years you want to have years, you know what I'm saying? Of course you had your one hit wonders and shit like that, but even then, you can hit, you can be on the the ja Rule and the and the and the uh in the DMX tour, just opening up on some shit, whatever like that. You can just, you know what I'm saying, win like that because you got the hot song, whatever. Now, man, niggas is getting. Shit, the, the shortest, the, I, I always bring up Cheddar to Connect, the nigga that got the song, look at the flick of the wrist, look at the flick of the wrist, but it's so many other ones, it's so many other ones, uh, nigga, uh, you remember Cash Out, ride around with that Nina, with that Nina, you know what I'm saying, like, you got, you got songs, like, this, this real deal, one hit wonders, but this is for everybody now. They turn on and off so fucking rapidly. And you know how I rock. Um, I'm not going to go into that. Let's get to the point. Because the shit is moving that fast, as a business, the labels never really gave a fuck about niggas. It, it, they, 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 they were the help. Anyway, they were always the help. But they were helping them make money. So, what happens is, they understand that an artist, what appeals to the people nowadays, the more reckless an artist is, hence, Rico Reckless, the more over the top, and, and the more he puts himself in danger, the faster that the Lamborghini drives, the more prone the label is to fucking fuck with him. To Kai 6 9 great example. Someone who obviously is going to hit a fucking brick wall. But, Bobby Smyrna. Listen to me, huh? Record label, this, this is, we saw this in the days of Tupac, but it, on a different level, though. Grab a motherfucker in the midst of a fucking beef. Grab them then, right then, in the midst of them fighting gunshot wounds. Like, all right, nigga, you in the hospital bed, you just got shot eight times, whatever like that, might not make it. Let me sign. We're going to sign you, whatever like that. And when you die now, because I know that your cells going to go through the roof because now you're dead before... You know what I'm saying? With you living, whatever like that, you'll do okay, whatever. But now that you die, it's up there. The labels are looking at this shit from a viewpoint of the artist is not going to have any true representation. Um, 
when the worst should happen, everybody's gonna be scrambling. When Dobie died, when Dobie died, um, everybody's scrambling and shit like that. Uh, don't mind know what's going on. Um, you start getting a whole bunch of conflicting stories up there about what actually took place. Like, where did the money go? Uh, we doing a fundraiser and I didn't have to get that money and, and now everybody just scrambling. It was fucking crazy. So much so that motherfuckers hollered at T.I. about this shit. As if T.I. Folks want to know what is going to happen to this money from the projects that will be dropped Down the line, because the death obviously came suddenly. You know what I'm saying? Or the incarceration came suddenly, or or it didn't come suddenly. Whatever the fuck it is, it came suddenly. There's a chick behind this one. You know what I'm saying? Like, move off the insurance policy, whatever like that. We talking about the proceeds from every song to come from this point on. He can't, he's no longer here. So, the person you would think that's going to receive that money will be the mother. And you will be wrong. The person who's going to receive the money now is the fucking label. The label owns everything. This is our shit. We bought him outright. He was our slave. And you have to think about it. What better... Fucking slave to buy. These motherfuckers are out. Like Lil Duval told you. Like if you're not dying. You ain't lit right now. These motherfuckers. Like we look at all the deaths we had. You know what I'm saying? Like we've had death, death, death. And what we talk about after death is. This CD coming out. That's coming out. Oh. X got a baby. This it, It's still. It's. It's so much going on with them. It's like they're still here. Their presence as far as business in their on their behalf is booming. It's booming at this point. It's booming more than when they were alive. You can... <clears throat> with Tupac, we saw it. All right, you can hold songs, hold songs, hold songs, drop songs. Like it's, it's so many shit. So much you can do. Just so much. There's so many ways to make money, but the thing is, you now have an interest. People are now interested in what it is you have, cause you no, they're not getting no more of this. Like this is this is it. Like I have the songs. So what I truly believe <clears throat> is, if labels aren't signing motherfuckers on their deathbed, understand it. On your deathbed can mean like you walk around the street every day, but you on your way out, and they can see that, and all they have to look at is for the same thing that they used to look at for a motherfucker that was high risk. Everything that they used to check off, like okay, yeah, he's high risk. We're not gonna fuck with him. Now it's like okay, he's high risk. Let's fuck with him because they see that the times have changed to where. I've said it before, hip-hop, this rap shit, has turned into a blood sport. The fans want blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, death is what they crave. As much as they... Ah, it, it's all that bullshit, whatever like that, they celebrate it every day. They celebrate it. They love it. And just to prove that they... It's crazy, though, because to prove that they don't love it, they'll support it. I fuck with him, man. I fuck with him just to show that I, I didn't want him to die and shit like that. But you were amping him up to do everything that he was doing. Like, Lil Peep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you loved his music about fucking overdosing and whatever the fuck else he was talking about when he was talking about that, you know what I'm saying? I can't move. I'm so fucking, you know what I'm saying? In cardiac arrest on these fucking pills and shit like that. Then when he overdosed from the shit, it's like, ah, the fuck going on? XXX Temptation, um, 
they just released a recording of him talking um, about beating up his bitch and shit like that and, and, and stabbing folks. The label is not a human. It, the label, you have to look at these motherfuckers like they are monsters, like ghosts, ghouls, like this, this terrible creatures. They have no shame. You know what I'm saying? Like they're in it for the money. Do not think for a second that. A label won't kill their own artists the same way a wife would murder a husband or a husband murder a wife for the insurance policy because that's pretty much what the label becomes when they sign an artist they, they become the other half you know what I'm saying and it's just they have so many other halves it's like this big building with all these fucking slaves that have and it just, it just throw it off when you just look at what's actually going on. But the way that you can open your eyes to this shit is just pay attention to the sales, just the, the points in the sales. When an artist is incarcerated and or dies. Look at those, look at those numbers. Like, you can see them, they can see them. I'm telling you that the motive is there for a label to fuck over their own artists. Whether that means getting them arrested, handing over evidence to the fucking police, or handing them over to the wolves. Put them in a situation that they should never be in. Send up a tour date in this place. Knowing that this is what's going on. I wouldn't put it past them to even put the motherfuckers in the crowd for it to happen. And niggas just so retarded, they don't know what the fuck going on. Like, ah, just, oh, them, them niggas here too, what the fuck? Ah, it's on, nigga. And this is where you get those ghost accounts. You wondering how this story, how is it that everybody knows about um, little Jay Fizzle getting robbed or whatever like that, and and not that the the shit then blew up. It's everywhere. Who had that kind of pull to make this much dust rise? Controversy sales. In a, in the times of who uh NWO was beefing with, in the times of um East Coast West Coast beef, the white motherfuckers in them office were loving that shit. Distribution companies were loving that shit because they don't give a fuck who the fuck is winning. We selling motherfucking tapes. On both sides. They call it something in war. In war, if you're an arms dealer, I don't know how that shit works. But as an arms dealer, you don't give a fuck who's winning the war. You want that shit to get as bloody and as savage as it needs to so you can keep on making money. And this is what the record label is. When... This internet came. They had to shuffle their fucking feet. And find a way. To get back. On top. Some kind of way. And I believe. I know that money is the root of all evil. And. I just do not put it past. These fucking devils to get motherfuckers murdered and arrested for their own financial gain, 
because they feel as if they'll justify by saying that's what he lived anyway. That was going to happen to him anyway. I helped him by giving him money. Because when Bobby Smurda get out, he's going to be Bobby Smurda, just the same old fucking... And it's over with. And this is what I'm telling you. And if no one... There's no reason for these fucking rappers that are being signed to be signed. They... It, it, it makes no sense. They, it's, there's no talent there. This, this is the most trash music has ever fucking been. This is the most violent that rap music has ever fucking been. This is the most confusing in every fucking way that you can think of that rap music has ever been. You don't know who's what sex. You don't know what sex they like. You don't know what race. You don't know what the fuck is going on. This is the most chaotic place on the planet right now. This hip-hop world of ours is... And within this confusion, I believe that there is a calm. And that calm is the motherfuckers in the office keeping everything spinning in the pot. As long as it's spinning and chaotic, it's fine. But I'm telling you, stop the shit and just look at it and tell me does it not seem like niggas getting arrested, shot, and killed? It's kind of convenient for one fucking person. Ah, this fuck. Ah, we we can. You know what I'm saying? We can look at the little the little differences in each one of these cases, but there's one thing that remains constant. I'm probably just crazy. I'm gonna do a part two to this shit. I'm gonna bring up a, a, a couple more things about some artists that passed that I think we need to look into a little bit. But just meal on that. And let me see what y'all are talking about. Make sure you hit the PayPal, Big Fast Podcast. Love.